Good morning, Cornerstone family and friends. A great big happy Thanksgiving in Canada this weekend. I trust that you're having a wonderful time. I just want to stop and reflect on how many things we can be thankful for this past year. I know in my personal life, we've had some uh, emergency surgeries. We've had loss of a beloved stepdad. And, uh, but there's been so many things that we can be so thankful for and grateful. And over the last uh, few months, we've been looking at the topic of building you. And uh, this month particularly, we're looking at things that we're grateful for and thankful for. And today we're gonna to be looking at building you, giving thanks. One day, the father of a very, very wealthy family took his son on a trip to the country with the express purpose of showing him how poor people live. They spent a couple of days and nights on the farm of what would be considered a very poor family. On their return from their trip, the father asked his son, how was the trip? It was great, Dad. Did you see how poor people live, the father asked? Oh yeah, said the son. So tell me, what did you learn from this trip, the father asked. The son answered, I saw that we have one dog and they had four. We have a pool that reaches to the middle of our garden and they have a creek that has no end. We have imported lanterns in our garden and they have stars at night. Our patio reaches to the front yard and they have the whole horizon. We have a small piece of land to live on and they have fields that go on beyond our sight. We have servants to serve us, but they serve others. We buy our food, but they grow theirs. We have walls around our property to protect us. They have friends to protect them. The boy's father was speechless. Then his son added, thanks dad for showing me how poor we are. Isn't perspective a wonderful thing? It really makes you wonder what would happen if we gave thanks for everything we have instead of worrying about what we don't have. There are a lot of things we can be thankful for. We can be thankful for God's love and forgiveness that he offers to every one of us on this planet. We're thankful for God's provision, for our health, for our home, for our family, our loved ones, for freedom. One person said, each day I'm thankful for nights that turned into mornings, friends that turned into family, dreams that turned into reality, and likes that turned into love. But you know, there's many things that can steal our gratitude and our thanks. And Corey Manglos in journeymadison.com talks about three things that, uh, three attitudes basically that can really steal our gratitude. One is pride. An attitude that says, I've done it all, I've worked hard and accomplished everything on my own. And yet really in a lot of cases in our life, it's been the efforts of many loved ones and those around us that have helped us to attain some of the things that we've sought for in life. A second thing is a critical spirit or constant complaining. Always finding something to go complain about. You know, on Saturday Night Live, they had Downer Debbie who always had the negative outlook on things. And you know, there are some people that just, they, they have like this black cloud that wants to hang over their head and talk about all the bad things that happen. I know right now COVID has really hit a lot of people and distressed them, but I just want to remind us all that you know, with God's strength and through prayer and through, you know, all the responsibilities of what we should do with COVID that are being instructed to us, we can get through this. And I pray that God would watch over family and loved ones because we, we know that it's not something that we can control. But isn't that really what life is? There's a lot of things we don't have control over. We can manipulate and we can try to steer things certain ways. And sometimes we're successful. But some things I've seen become totally unrivaled. You know, it's funny, sometimes I do weddings and you can do all the planning and yet you never anticipate what little ring bearers or flower girls or even sometimes in really hot days where somebody's standing up at a wedding and they haven't really moved and shuffled and suddenly they faint. Things that you don't plan for. Life is full of things that you don't plan for. But can we be thankful even in the journey that we can see the good things and learn from them and grow from them. Having a critical spirit or constant com complaining really not only works against you and defeats you, it also affects people around you. The third thing he says, carelessness. We forget about the Lord's provision and care. We take things for granted. And that little story I shared at the beginning gives that perspective to us. 
You know, in the Old Testament, there's a story about Hannah, and she'd gone uh, to the temple, and she prayed. She was not able to have children at that time. And the priest saw her and saw that she was mouthing and wondering what was going on, thought she was drunk, and then she poured out her story, what, was, what she was praying about, that she was uh, distressed over the fact that she couldn't have children. And so the priest said, well, go your way, and, and God grant you uh, your, your prayer. As it turned out, in a short time, uh, she found out that she was pregnant, and her promise was that if she had a child, she would give that child back to the Lord. And that became the prophet Samuel. Uh, but Hannah prayed this prayer when God had answered her prayer and brought into her life this baby boy. She prayed in 1 Samuel chapter 2, verses 1-8. to I'm bursting with good news, and I'm reading this from the message. I'm bursting with good news. I'm walking on air. I'm laughing at my rivals. I'm dancing my salvation. Nothing and no one is holy like God. No rock mountain like our God. Don't dare talk pretentiously. Not a word of boasting ever. For God knows what's going on. He takes the measure of everything that happens. The weapons of the strong are smashed to pieces while the weak are infused with fresh strength. The well-fed are out begging in the streets for crusts while the hungry are getting second helpings. The barren woman has a house full of children, while the mother of many is bereft. God brings death and God brings life, brings down to the graves and raises up. God brings poverty and God brings wealth. He lowers, he also lifts up. He puts poor people on their feet again. He rekindles burned out lives with fresh hope, restoring dignity and respect to their lives, a place in the sun. You know, a wonderful description of her heart full of thanksgiving, just expressing her gratitude to God that he had answered her prayer. You know, it's always a wonderful thing when we see the answers to prayer. And I wish I could say that as a pastor, uh, as a believer in Christ, that my prayers are answered every time. And it's just like I get everything I want. But you know what? There's a lot of things in life I don't want and I get. <laughs> You know, sometimes you have health issues. Sometimes um, business dealings can go wrong. Sometimes relationships can go sour. All those things can happen in life. And then you get things like COVID come out of the blue and you can't control any of that. But you can either be complaining and critical or you can bring these to God and just say, Lord, I need your strength. I need your help. And I give you thanks that you are in control. So I surrender these things to you and Help me to trust you. I want to take care of it myself, but it's not working. You know, there's lots of good quotes out there on Thanksgiving. John F. Kennedy said, we must find time to stop and thank the people who make a difference in our lives. This keeps from this is come, coming from Keep Inspiring Me uh, from Natalie Seal on September 4th of 2020 this year. Irma Bombeck said, Thanksgiving dinners, have, they take 18 hours to prepare and they are consumed in 12 minutes. And then she goes on to say, Half times take 12 minutes. All our football fans out there, you know, I love football too. And she says, this is not a coincidence. 12 minutes to have that consumed, just like halftime. Johnny Carson was a well-known um, host on television. And he said, Thanksgiving is an emotional holiday. People travel thousands of miles to be with people they only see once a year. And then they discover once a year is way too often. <laughs> um, Catherine Pulsifer said, give thanks, not just on Thanksgiving Day, but every day of your life. Appreciate and never take for granted all that you have. And Stephanie Conkle said, once you start practicing being grateful and thankful for things, people and events, you may notice that you start to attract more positive things, people and events in your life. You know, there's a lot of impact on giving thanks in your personal life. Courtney Ackerman wrote the article, What is Gratitude and Why is It So Important? in PositivePsychology.com of January 9th, 2020 this year. And she co comments about different things that really impact your life. It helps your well-being. It enhances your well-being. You tend to be more agreeable and more open when you're giving thanks. You tend to have more deeper relationships and it promotes really strong relationship formation. There's an improved optimism, which really supports a healthy lifestyle. One of the things they noticed, uh, there was an increased happiness. And this came from several different studies that have been done looking at happiness and gratefulness and, and uh, thanksgiving. There's a tendency to have stronger self-control, which helps in your personal discipline and helps you to focus. 
it also gives you that resolve to carry on and move through things that are sometimes very difficult. There's better physical and mental health, which can help to reduce levels of stress that people carry. And right now, folks, there's so much that's going on in our world that you can look at all those circumstances and forget to just take time to thank God and be thankful for things that you have in your life. And that can help to reduce the levels of stress. We're seeing such levels of increase with anxiety and depression with so many people just because they cannot control what is going on. I just want to encourage you, be thankful. Even if it's the little things today, be thankful. There's also a stronger athleticism for people is what they've noticed in their studies, that people are they're more focused, they're able to take on the, the challenge of their athletic event. Uh, they get the backing of people cheering them on. You know, if you've ever been in a stadium I've been to um, Western Finals in football. I've been in Stanley Cup uh, arenas. Uh, um, I'm sorry, NHL arenas, not Stanley Cup. NHL arenas, uh, rooting for favorite teams. But you know, when you're when you're in those kind of settings, you you hear the cheer of the people. You hear their their uh, roar around you as goals are scored, or, and watching all the activity that is taking place, or yards are gained on the field, and touchdowns. Oh, you know, whatever the sport you're you're at, you can see just the enthusiasm of people just celebrating, and that's what Thanksgiving is really about. It's celebration. It's thanking God and thanking um, uh, how life has come around and worked in your life so many times to be grateful from even just the small things. Uh, also, the last one is there's a stronger neurologically based morality is what they found. In an MRI study, it noticed that there was an increased activity in areas of the brain that deal with morality, reward, and judgment. And it was recommended that the study carry on to kind of find out a little bit more detail of what happens when people are thankful and give thanks. You know, there's a lot of power in gratitude. And Lisa Apollo, uh, dot com had written an article not too long ago, 12 Benefits of Giving God Thanks. In her life, she had um, a spouse that had passed away and she was left with seven children and it rattled her world, of course. But as she's gone through this, one of the things that she's come through is to look at the benefits of giving God thanks. She said that gratitude glorifies God. Gratitude helps us see God, his work in and around us. Gratitude puts us in a place of being in God's will and leads us to a place of obedience and wanting to serve him. Gratitude brings peace, and she notes that sometimes this is the supernatural help in life events that go awry, things that go against the grain, things that don't turn out like you want them to. Gratitude draws us to God. Gratitude brings contentment. Gratitude deepens our faith. It allows us to reflect back on the past and gives an assurance for our future. Gratitude leads to joy. Gratitude defies Satan's lies. No good thing will he withhold, is what the scriptures tell us that God wants to do in our lives to those that walk uprightly in Psalms 84 11. Gratitude guards against envy, that place of wanting what somebody else has. We become more grateful for his provisions and what he brings into our lives and the instruction he gives to help us to acquire wealth and blessing. Gratitude helps us live in the present. We live today fully. We don't just dwell on yesterday and the failures of the past, but we look at today, his mercies are new every morning, great is his faithfulness, and we go, today I give thanks for. You know, being a person that just says, what will I be thankful for? What will I challenge and define my life to consider doing is a significant challenge. And yet when we practice that effort to try to be thankful, to give God thanks, to be grateful and thankful for what we have. There are a lot of things to celebrate in life, and I just wanna encourage you to do so. Gratitude also, she finally says, is a testimony where peace and contentment comes from the one we know. You know, Jesus promised, my peace I give you, not as the world gives. And you know, there's sometimes we look at the circumstances of the world when it's in turmoil, there are many places in the world, there's wars, outbreaks of wars, famine. This past uh, year, we watched how locusts came into, you know, into the eastern part of Africa and wiped out crops, you know, and we know that that's going to produce famine in that area. We've seen the wars that have gone in northern Syria, across that whole region. A lot of people have been left homeless. 
left without any of their belongings. Many people have crossed the Mediterranean from Northern Africa trying to get into Europe and into Greece and into uh, that whole region to, to escape some of the stuff that's been going on in those countries. And yet they, they've left everything in, in hopes of trying to find something that they can be thankful and have a new life. Sometimes it's worth stopping and going, what am I thankful for? There's so much we as Canadians can be thankful for and grateful for in our personal lives. You know, the scriptures encourage us to be thankful. In Colossians 3.17, it says, And whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. Psalm 95 two says, Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving. Let us shout joyfully to him with psalms. And if I reflect back last week as we talked about growing in gratitude, we mentioned, I mentioned the 10 lepers and one had come back and he came back shouting his thanks. He was so excited about, about his healing from leprosy. First, Chron First Chronicles 16, 34 says, Give thanks to the Lord for he is good. His love endures forever. You know, that is a character of God, the characteristics of God. He is good. He, am, he is fully good. And yet, you know, a lot of times people are angry with God. They blame him for everything that's happening, the circumstances, the situations. Does God see and does God know everything that's going on? Well, from the scriptures, we see that he does. And we often say, well, don't you want to intervene and help us here? And God, in occasion, does intervene. But the scriptures point to us that God has given man a free will to make choices and God has allowed man to discover life and all that's around it and to acquire and to accomplish. And, you know, you read the, the um, Solomon's um, thoughts in, in the Song of Solomon and Ecclesiastes, particularly, you know, and all the adventure of life. And God is the one we come to to develop relationship and grow internally, spiritually, and grow with life. He does intervene. He does help. But he calls upon us to build relationship with him because that's what he desires and to praise him. And in that journey of that, God gives us strengths and helps to get through the things that are sometimes difficult and challenging. God is good, period. Psalm 104 says, enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. Can you imagine if we chose instead of complaining and being bitter and angry about things, that we took on this challenge to enter into God's presence with thanksgiving and praise, giving him glory. Despite the circumstances and situations that we cannot control, God is still good. That at the end of the game, at the end of life, our goal is to be with him, where the Bible says he'll wipe away every tear. I know we carry tears, we carry pain and sorrow, but at the end of this, God says, He's going to welcome us home, heaven, and he'll wipe away our tears. There'll be no more pain, no more sorrow. Let's give God thanks today. Let's start working in that arena, giving him praise. First Thessalonians 5.18 says, Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Remember Paul and Silas as they were beaten in the New Testament that talks about in their journeys and sharing the gospel and telling people about God's love for them and what Jesus had done, dying on the cross to save people from their sins. And they were in one community, of course, where they were beaten and they were thrown into prison. And it tells us the story that as they were in that place, they began to praise and worship God and sing. And uh, God rescued them and delivered them from a prison. It's an amazing story. Maybe we'll look into that next week. How do we say thanks to God? You and I, on a day-to-day -day basis, need to consider a few things. One, spending time with God. You know, if I want to build a good relationship with my wife and my family, I need to spend time with them. Nobody's going to do it for me. I can't leave it to somebody else's responsibility. It's me. I have to do that. And the same with the Christian walk. If you want to discover God and know what he's going to do in your life and how he's walking and working in your life, Having that place of coming to him with thanksgiving and spending time with him is a great place to start. Another way we can say thanks to God is by taking the time to forgive others. Not an easy journey sometimes. Sometimes things go very wrong. Sometimes relationships falter. 
and it's very hard to forgive for situations and circumstances that, that happen. We always have our perspective of why we have been hurt or wounded, but there is such liberty and such freedom when we begin to learn and discover how valuable it is to be able to forgive people and move on. It doesn't mean we forget that uh, we don't put ourselves in a position that we could be wounded and hurt again, but we can choose to forgive others and move forward. Another way to say thanks to God is by serving Him. How do we love God? Well, not only do we say that we love Him because He loved us first and we ask Him into our life, but it's an act of serving Him, whether it's to my neighbor, whether it's to the person at work. In some capacity, I can serve others, and in such a way, I'm serving Him. Share your testimony of God's salvation. One of the greatest things you can do is share your story. It's your story, what God has done in your life, your journey with God. And people can't really take that away from your experiential part of your life. You can share what God has been doing in your journey. Share your testimony, what God has done for you. Reach out to people. You know, there's lots of people around us that could use an encouraging word, help in some capacity. Just taking a moment to help somebody, reach out to them, can do a great job. Even a phone call, an email, a text. Give God your best. You know, a lot of times we kind of put out everything we want for what we want to attain and what we want to do, and we leave a little bit for God. But sometimes it's important to remember, give God your best in everything you do. And lastly, praise God from your heart. Not just surfacey lip service, but from, an, from a heart that is open before him and saying, God, I love what you're doing in my life. I love how you love me and what you want to accomplish in me and I wanna give you praise in my life. I just wanna encourage you with some thoughts this morning with giving thanks. The power of being able to recognize that, you know, God looks at us and he says, you're my child, I love you, I desire good things in your life, and I wish that you will have a great Thanksgiving weekend as you stop and think about the loved ones in your life and the events that have brought great joy in your life, and to just remember and reflect this, this weekend what things you're grateful for and thankful for. Journey this week. Look at what things are happening on your day-to-day -day and say, God, thank you for, insert what's going on, insert the joy of something. Tell God and express to God how much you're thankful for how he's working in your life. I wish you a great Thanksgiving weekend. God bless you. Let's pray. Father, I just pray that you would help us to really look at our past year and and stop and think about all the blessings you brought into our lives and not just this past year but really when we reflect back on so many events we can say god thank you for your helps thank you for your strength thank you for your encouragement and lord i just pray that as we uh, have just taken a look at giving thanks that you would just bless hearts this morning and help them to see that you are wanting to help them to to be able to be stronger in this arena of their own life of being able to give thanks if we've been critical, if we've been complaining, if we've been looking at everything negatively, Lord, I just pray that you would renew in us a spirit of joy and peace and love and thanksgiving filled with gratitude for what you are doing and accomplishing in our lives. For those that are struggling this morning and going through difficult places, I pray your peace, your confidence, and your support would be theirs. And that God, you would enrich their life that they can come through this and give you thanks. Thank you, Lord. We bless you and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you, folks. <clears throat> Have a great Thanksgiving weekend. Take care.